Where have you been here the last few weeks? We're in uh, the third of three sermons um, looking at giving. Um, and we gave a sort of flyer out if you didn't pick up one of those and there's some in the foyer. Um, and we're just taking an opportunity to look at when God blesses us, um, do we trust him enough for his blessings? And also, are we, uh, are we following in his stead and being generous like him? Um, and we've sort of shaped that in, in the sense that the more that we receive from God, then he invites us to step out uh, in those things. One is in trusting him for his provision, and the second is in being like him in generosity. And so we've got a number of stations that are around there for that, but I just wanted to share um, a, a couple of stories. One uh, ties in a little bit with what um, Stuart was talking about last week. Who was here with Stuart last week? Quite a number of you. Uh, he shared a, a little monologue where he talked about um, uh, when you own something, it starts to own you. Yeah, do you know what I'm talking about? You know, it's up, you know your possessions start to possess you. And you're, and, and you're, and you're, own, you're led by them. Do you get what I'm saying? And, uh, and he did this thing. Uh, I wasn't here, but I got sent a photo. Um, and in the middle of the sermon, I got sent a photo from Katie, who's a youth worker. She, she sent me a text that he's tying himself up with green string. <laughs> <laughs> and he was. He was standing there telling the story of how things possess you and own you. And as he was doing so, he was just tying himself up in green string. It was, it was beginning to restrict his freedom. The more he was trying to pursue his own way, the more he lost his freedom. Do you see what I'm saying? It reminds me of a story which some of you may well know, but there's a, 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 a way that in India they catch monkeys. You heard this? Yeah, the, what they do is um, uh, when the monkeys come into the farms and they, and they, and they take all the, you know, they wreck uh, uh, with the livestock or take all the corn or, or the rice or whatever is in the issue, they, um, they, they hang up in the trees um, coconut shells with a hole cut into it that is the size of a monkey's fist, right? And inside the coconut, they place nuts. Fair, right? So the monkeys come along, and instead of taking the, um, the crops or whatever, the monkeys climb up the tree, and they stick their hand in the coconut shell. And then what happens is they grab the nuts. But because their fist is swollen with the size of nuts, they can't get their hand out. And this is the sad thing. They don't let go. And the farmers come, and they just take them. Isn't that horrifying? The things that we hold on to, and we lose our lives. Jesus said something about that. That's one thing I wanted to share. The other thing I wanted to share uh, is, um, uh, is around uh, why we named our second daughter Lee, who's at the back over here. One job in the way. Um, and, and we named Leah Leah Lily. Um, and uh, the, the, I don't know whether you guys have this uh, same sort of situation. When we, you know, when you, you may have had children or grandchildren, whatever it is, when we were uh, expecting our second child, in fact, it happened with our first child too, uh, my mum was incessant with telling us what names we should name our children. <laughs> Anyone else have that? Um, there, there was one moment where I told my mum, this is from Phoebe, I told my mum we had already decided on the name. We weren't going to announce it until she was born, but we'd already decided. First name, two middle names, last, like everything. So, and, and you know, and then she proceeded to tell me six or seven names that she thought was really good. And I said, we've, we've done it. It's like, nothing's going to change the mind. We love this, actually, Billy loved this name since before she met me. And, you know, like, it, it feels right, it feels like so. Cool. The following morning, I received every single name from my family tree for 12 generations that I wanted. I still have that piece of paper. It's like huge. It's got, you know, she's like, oh, your family name. Just in case we were just family. Mom, we've chosen the name. Anyway, so the same thing happened when, uh, when uh, we were expecting Leah. And uh, um, a slightly different situation because we actually had landed on the name. We thought we had it. And you, saw, you know, chopping and changing all those sort of things. And then my mum did the same thing where she was just constantly sending us these names. Anyway, she then she sent the list of, oh, here's some other biblical names you might not have thought of. And it included Lily. And I thought, this Lily. I was like, oh, shoot. I, I can't remember that story. <laughs> and everyone else is going, oh, I can't remember that story either. <laughs> yeah? The Lily's in the field. Yeah. <laughs> and it just resonated with the right? Because there's this beautiful parable where Jesus says, if you're worried, look at my provision. Isn't that beautiful? When you've got anxiety, see how good I am. See my beauty and what I lay out. That's, that's the antidote to anxiety. 
That's the antidote to all our frustration and fighting one another, is because we, we believe we don't have enough. But God's, Jesus says his antidote to that is just look at my provision. And Billy and I were like, that's it. We want Lily in the name. And so she's Leah Lily, which Phoebe likes to say very early in the morning and very early tonight. Leah Lily! Lily! <laughs> so, anyway, so it's, it's, now not everyone who lives in our house, that's, you know, sometimes she gets called Lily more than Leah. But, uh, but, but there's something about that, isn't there? About that God's provision is so good. Um, and what we need to just do is look. So let's just leave this on to the first of our stations that we're looking at this morning. So this is station one, I'm just going to walk around and talk about our five stations. Station number one um, is a, a thanksgiving tree. This is an opportunity for us to do exactly that, to look at the lilies of the field, to look at the things that are beautiful, that you are grateful for. And that could be your morning coffee. My morning coffee was particularly good this morning. Um, it was wonderful. I don't know what was different, but Billy made it. It was, it was lovely. She's obviously been learning from Paul. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, but it could be that, or it could be, you know, um, the, the, the beauty of uh, the, the sunrise, or, or, or the mountain view, or whatever it is. It's, you know, something that is that just exuberates you. Just, just pause for a minute and think about where beauty is. And what we're just inviting you to do is take one of these, thanks God for pieces of paper, and just list stuff. Don't feel stuck to one side. Cover the second side. You know, if you feel that, then grab another one, um, and then just pick it up on this tree. Um, this is just, it's so important to pour out thankfulness because it orientates us to what God is actually already doing and God has already done. And then, once you've done that, I just invite you to pause for a moment and just look at someone else's piece of paper and then give thanks for what they've given thanks for. Yeah? First thing to do when we step into God's likeness and to His generosity is to see His handiwork. Yeah, okay, so that's uh, station number one, um, and uh, help yourself to that. Station number two is this one. I was describing earlier about um, Stuart tying himself up in green thread, and so we decided that everyone would be the same. Uh, and what we've done is we've just created this sort of web uh, area that we invite you to come and step inside and think about perhaps some of those things that trap you. Perhaps you've got some possessions or some desires for something that actually is inhibiting your freedom. And if you can't think of them, maybe just sit for a moment and say, God, what, what is holding me back? This is, in essence, our confession this morning. Take time in here, be still, say, Lord, where, where am I tied up? And help me to release that. Perhaps there's also another part of this is, perhaps, as we're thinking about generosity, where do you struggle to let go and give things? And I remember... Uh, uh, a friend of mine, um, very, very ha happy to, to lend out um, uh, his flat for me to come and stay. Um, and, and in fact, he was, he was very generous with sort of, you know, buying me coffees and that sort of thing. But he would never let me borrow his car. <laughs> you know? It's funny, isn't it? We all have limits. There's something that holds us back. I wonder what is yours. Maybe ask God to say, where am I struggling to be generous? To live as though actually all my possessions are yours, or they're not mine. Because in the kingdom of love, everything is God's. Amen? Mm. So take, take time in here. There's enough seats. If there's not enough seats, then sit on the floor or stand in the middle of it. Um, and if we kind of respect this as a kind of a quiet area, um, that would be great for people to do that. Um, but then when you walk out, just take that moment to step away from the freedom and feel God's forgiveness. Away from the, no, step into the freedom. No, you know what I'm saying. Okay, the third one is over here, um, and this is uh, particularly for those of us who like to use our hands. Uh, this is Play Doh. Um, and uh, um, we've got a little stand here for you to, uh, once you've made something, to put it on here. Um, and what, what we wanted to do was just take a moment to think about how people have been generous to us. You know, um, people who've done amazing things for you. Um, that could be, could be your parents, it might not be your parents, but it could be your parents, it could be someone who the other day opened the door for you, and they didn't need to do that, but they were gracious. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and just have a think about that, because watching people being like God is a really good way to learn how to become like God. Are you with me? Yeah? So, um, what we invite you to do is grab a bit of play mode, and either make the shape of that person that was generous to you, or perhaps something that symbolizes that, or perhaps the gift they gave you, or the thing they helped you with. Um, uh, it looks like there's a house here, and... 
something else. That might have been that yours. Which one? This one here. It's actually Billy's. It's actually Billy's. Oh, it's a house as well. Okay, there's two houses, um, but that's great. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, come and be creative, take your time, and as you do so, just give thanks for that person and say, Lord, help me to become like that person. Yeah? Okay, so that's station one, tree, two, web, three is God like people. Station four is down over here on the right. This one, um, uh, I mean, feel free to take your time over whichever ones you want to do, but this one, it would be great if everybody did this one because we're going to do something with this at the end of our stations. So this here is about us making a commitment to being a more, more generous community. Um, what we haven't done, you may have noticed in our giving sermon, is we haven't done that thing where we put out a slip for you to fill in and say, I'm now going to commit to giving more money. Um, uh, and, uh, and whilst that is a really good thing to do, we're not saying that's a bad thing to do, um, we, we just felt that this time, that what we wanted to talk about was generosity. And then the overflow is us giving more. You see what I'm saying? It's about our heart orientation. And then the fruit is that we give more. So what we wanted to do was to have something that symbolised us making this commitment. And there's a piece of paper down here. And it just simply says, I, blank space, step forward, trust in God for all I need. I commit to being more generous with all I have. And what we invite you to do is to write your name on there. And then put your foot on it and draw around your foot. And in essence, it's you stepping forward. Do you get it? It's a little funny act, but there's something that happens when we do something physically that backs up something spiritually. Are you with me? That's why we do things like baptism. That's why we celebrate communion. Yeah? It's because it's something that's physical that represents something that's spiritual. So draw around your foot um, uh, and then hold on to it because we'll bring it forward uh, at the end of our time together. Is that cool? And then the last one is up here. Oh, yeah. uh, the last one up here is uh, there's a map of the world under my feet. Uh, you can probably see the white sheet there. Um, and uh, what we invite you to do is to step into this act of generosity and ask for God to pour out upon you a heart of compassion and generosity for others. Um, and we wanted to do that in a way of praying for the world. And so we invite you to come and stand wherever you would like in the world. Um, what I feel drawn to stunning by Washington, D.C., where there's a lot of turmoil and difficulty and it affects the rest of us. Um, and stand in this place and say, Lord, give me compassion for this place and for the people who live here. In fact, we've written a little prayer that you can say, God, give me compassion for this place and for the people who live here and pray they may be generously blessed. And I pray that for Donald Trump. I mean that. You know? We want to have compassion. I pray that for all the people who are hating him. Yeah? I pray that for all of the anxiety and stuff that goes on there. I pray for the effect that not investing in climate change and all we do to do that. I pray blessing on that. So I invite you to do that. Come and stand somewhere um, and think about that. Um, to that station. Oh yeah, just, uh, just to watch at the edge of the map is pens on the floor. So, um, yeah. don't do a, uh, you know, a pay level adjusting. Um, please wear your shoes. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. Shall I pray? And then we, we've got 15 minutes to, to wander around these things. Uh, do spend your time wherever you feel led. Um, uh, engage with that. If you want to talk to some people about it, feel free to do so. That's absolutely great. And then um, it'd be great if everyone had done the foot by the time 15 minutes is up. So, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so, 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 so much for your generosity to us. And we thank you that all we have to do is look and we can see that you pour out blessings upon us. Lord, help us to be more generous like you. So would you bless this time as we wander around? Would you help us to connect with you in these different ways. Would you do your work? And we pray this in Jesus' perfect, precious, and mighty name. Amen. Enjoy.